Ask a composer who the greatest of all time is, and the answer you'll hear most often is Bach. I've got proof. Bach recently came top in a poll of 200 composers for BBC Music. Mozart and Beethoven may be more popular in the concert hall, but Bach is preferred by composers and musicians because Bach taught them all. That comes from a Bach piece. It was by Bach. It went like that. Bach is the greatest teacher because he possessed the greatest musical mind that ever existed. Bach's total mastery of harmony and counterpoint meant he could weave separate lines of music into a musical whole better than any other human. Period. However, its complexity and density meant it took a while for the composer to be appreciated. About 100 years, in fact. If you said you loved Bach during Mozart or Beethoven's time, people would probably assume you meant his fifth son, Carl Philipp Emanuel, or his other son, J.C., or his other other son, J.C.F. Bach, or his other 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 son, W.F. Bach. Large family, the Bachs. For 100 years, this musical giant was silent in the concert halls, but Bach was still doing what Bach does best, teaching. This is the most influential piano book ever written. Bach wrote his 48 Preludes and Fugues as exercises for his own children, and it would be the infant Mozart, the child Beethoven, and pretty much every other young composer who would learn from this slim volume. Not just how to play, not just how to play fugues, but how to compose. The influence of the small book on classical music is incalculable. Mozart, Beethoven, Schumann, Chopin, they all adored Bach. But Bach was inside a knowledge for the years after his death. His Mass in B minor, one of the mightiest works ever written, wasn't even performed in his lifetime. <laughs> It wasn't until Mendelssohn's celebrated performance of Bach's St. Matthew's Passion in 1845, the first time this mighty work had been heard in more than a hundred years, that Bach's public rehabilitation really began. Four years later, in 1849, his Brandenburg concertos, now six of the most popular pieces of all time, were found in a library gathering dust. Bach's revival has continued unabated to this day. The world just needed time to catch up with how good Bach was. And that's because Bach wasn't just a musical genius, he was also a master of expressiveness. Bach didn't write operas, but he never needed to. Over the course of some half a dozen passions and 300 cantatas, he more than rewarded the human voice and spirit. He wrote these weekly for most of his working life, ready to be performed on Sunday. Only 200 of those 300 cantatas have survived today, and we've lost at least two whole passions. Yet what has survived is a gargantuan record of incredible vocal music, profound study of spirituality, passion, the human condition, and contemplation of death. Bach is a composer you just keep coming back to. Whenever you hear him again, it just keeps getting better. No other composer has a musical mind as profound and as accomplished. He is awe-inspiring to an almost intimidating degree. He is a composer of sometimes bewildering complexity, but crucially, the most intense and profound emotion. The author Douglas Adams puts it perfectly. Beethoven tells you what it's like to be Beethoven. Mozart tells you what it's like to be human. But Bach tells you what it's like to be the universe. Mm -hmm.